Now, I've already put out a pod- podcast this morning. Normally, I just put one a day out. But something's came up that brought back memories that reminded me of an event that happened 38 years ago. Something I've been carrying around in my conscience for 38 years and I need to get it off my chest once and for all. Now it's been 38 years. But the act I committed it was pretty heinous. And only a handful of people know about it. My family. Uh, five of us, two brothers, my mother and father, they're all still alive. And a couple close friends. And then there's a, yeah. That's probably, and I might have told a few others. I've even posted it on Facebook. Ah, 1986. December 16th, 1986. I felt that I got to get on here and do this because... The truth needs to come out. The city of Tulsa needs to hear this. And it is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I went and got coffee, real coffee, because I didn't have any this morning. Let's get into the story. (sighs) Well, let me read the story to you. Then we'll explain, okay? Here we go. This is the Los Angeles Times, and it's dated, I'm looking up at the screen, guys, because it's bigger, December 16th, 1986, I would have been 20 years old, and the story reads, shop offers $500 to put sniper who shot Frosty on ice. A $500 reward was being offered for the arrest and cold-hearted gunman who attempted to deflate the holiday spirit at a Tulsa shopping center by taking aim at a 42-foot-tall Frosty the Snowman. The giant uh, giant vinyl figure, complete with stovepipe hat, button nose, corncob pipe, bright muffler wound around his neck was was bandaged and reinflated by store owners at the Eaton Square shopping center after a sniper tried to ice the the, the snowman last month shopkeepers have offered the reward for the information leading to the arrest of the unknown sharpshooter and have memorialized the snowman's chilling experience in a country ballad, Who Shot Frosty? And I, there's no picture. There was a picture at one time. So imagine on top of a grocery store, not just an, a regular grocery store. This was a rich people grocery store. It was called Petty's. Uh, they had carpeting and caviar. Me and my buddy once bought a can of caviar for 90 bucks just to taste it. We took one spoonful and spit it out. (laughs) I had a 38 snub nose pistola. And I lived across the street from said frosty, said grocery store. Well... One thing led to another. I could not resist, man. I took my shot. I wasn't sure if I hit it. I wasn't sure. I looked out my window a few hours later, and there it was. He was laying limp. I knew then that I had committed a dastardly deed. The following day, and probably the following two weeks, but the following day, I had to go to work. 
and a co-worker like to listen to an AM talk show radio. Well, that came on the news. And I'm there, knowing I did it. Knowing I did it. And I can't say nothing, because now I know. I'm going to go to jail if they catch me. Never got caught. Never got caught. We, you know how family does, you know. There's always something happens in a family that you just, we don't talk about. My mom's carried that in her mind for 38 years, knowing her son put down a 42-foot vinyl bean. And I got to tell you, I didn't like it. I look out my window and there he was with his stupid pipe. With his dumb nose. Swaying in the wind. Twenty-year-old man can only take so much. And when you put a few beers into the equation, it ain't going to end well, man. It ain't. Why am I talking with that thing still there? Let's go back. Sorry about that. Hey, at least I got the microphone this time. So this morning, I just kind of Googled who shot Frosty. Because I know that story was on the internet a few years ago from the Tulsa paper. And so I seen this one. I'm like, wow, that hit the AP wire. All them years I worked for newspapers. And I made national news. And to this day, you know, I'm sure, I, I know that grocery store is no longer in business. I'm sure the guy that offered the reward is probably very old or dead. Because that was 38 years ago. You know, I'm 58. And I'm a fugitive. I can't go. I was going to go to Tulsa. Visit my parents. But now... Are they going to nab me? I don't want to go to jail. I got dogs. But I believe, since it was not a human being, that the statue, the statue of limitations have run out. <laughs> no pun in little statue. <sighs> so I guess you could say. I performed the first, and I don't even want to say that. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Blank shooting. Because it was massive. He was massive. The next day, I get off work. And after knowing that, I'm expecting. Police are going to be there, man. They're going to be there. They're going to haul me in. And there stands... Frosty with a big ass band aid right across here. I actually shot him twice. And I don't know if I, they said something about a scarf, but that is not, it was right where your spleen is on a human. Three days later, and, and I, I'm looking for this song, guys. I want to find this song. But three days later, I got mononucleosis. I was sick for weeks. Weeks. I got so sick. And, then, you know, this is my first apartment by myself, you know. Uh, I had roommates before that. I had moved out before that. But I was scheduled to go to Drill Sergeant Academy January 5th. Of that year and I was waiting you know for the Fort Polk or Fort Sill Oklahoma I got sick so bad they had to cancel the orders and I got so sick my parents had to come get me and bring me to their house because I could not stand and then I started to get a little better and I went for a ride with my father in his truck and that was on a Sunday and that evening, I guess, they went to church. That We had an ice storm. Uh, you get those in Oklahoma. And they came home from church and found me in the bathroom collapsed. And my spleen had ruptured. 
And so in an ice storm, somehow he got me to the hospital. They did surgery immediately. And I don't remember much of that, any of that at all. All I remember is waking up in the hospital. So I guess you could say karma got me because now I have a big scar in that exact same spot. True story, believe it or not. But my family knows, uh, especially my brothers, they know that I did this. And it was one of them to come up one day, I don't know, somebody, one of my brothers snitched, I think. Had to have been one of them. Because then my parents found out somehow. Uh, I didn't tell them, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think I was taking that to my grave. But my brother, one of them two, had to snitch me out. That's all it could be. Poor Frosty. Christmas will never be the same for me, guys, and it never has been. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the story because it really did happen. And, uh, wow, national news. I didn't know it then, but there it is. We're looking at it. Happy trails.